but you know i don't know <laughs> for me like i realized that like ultimately like all this stress and all these expectations that you know you put on yourself and of course like me being socially awkward and blah 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 you know i don't really have the right moves and you know i feel awkward and i feel on stage and you know i'm i've never really been like truly like in love with being on the stage and having a spotlight on me i'm yeah, a bit of a shy think, guy cuz you know, i like, think that's I, also f- f- yeah. for you another thing is cuz you're the guy who takes care of the sound right Yeah. So I mean I, I relinquish so, that. No, no, so, I mean but <laughs> usually you were like not just like the sound but like okay you're setting up the logic thing or the Cubase project and yeah, you know I gave, so I just, handed that responsibility over to Dave also after a point. <laughs> Please. Because that in itself is such an ang- anxious thing to do because like you could be playing completely fine one second and then one millisecond the computer yeah. needs to stop and that's it. And that's it. Or you know and man like of course NH7 uh, 2016 at Pune first show with Eric in India um, and, and we've had a absolute cluster fuck of uh, of a line check because like something is wrong the click is on the PA we can't figure it out finally when we figure it out we start the set and I've muted Eric's backing oh, yeah. track from his ears so he has no, no pitch idea, reference yeah. because because we are also geniuses and we chose not to have any amps on stage. because you know everything is in your in ear but i muted his in ear so he was so off dude and like it was all my fault yeah. and and i mean all of this shit was just you know i don't know man like after a point i was just like man you know it's cool people love it and stuff but like it's so stressful like yeah i would rather just go back to being in my room and just writing stuff to like that's, that's the joy that's so comfortable that's like okay yeah. this is easy for me to do i yeah, can do yeah, this yeah, yeah. but this goes to a very important point which i wanted yeah. to introduce at mm-hmm. some point but it, like it's like a perfect segue is you cannot think of your band or that entity you have as your only means of money because if you do <laughs> that then like suicide that's the worst thing you can do you need I mean, to, you need to have as many sources yeah. of income as you can have and you are the perfect example for that because not, not only really. does i mean no because like not really are you because i've never seen you at a point like whenever i talk to you about doing new stuff you're always like okay you know what i'm thinking of trying of doing this and i'm trying to, trying to get into this sphere and do that sure. and so it's not so if you keep heads keep your like keep stubborn about the fact that oh you know what i'm a, i'm a band i'm going to do this whole touring thing and mm-hmm. if you don't do anything beyond that it's not really going to last because it's impossible like that's sadly how the way the industry is at that this point of time and if you don't have any other means like like now you have since then because then you took a conscious decision that okay touring is not something that i'm comfortable with so okay now this time full that time. I, yeah, yeah. yeah so if if i was going to do touring full time if i don't want to do that now i need to substitute with that with somebody else yeah yeah and yeah, i think yeah. that's when your whole mixing thing really started picking up because yeah, that, sure because i'm sure a lot of people before would have been like oh keshav i would love to get something mixed by you but, but you would be like dude i can't never, i'm on tour yeah you know, you know that it's a very important point that you brought up because like this was something that was really it was like just chewing away at my head for a long long time because i love working on music i mean honestly like if i had to choose between performing and creating and when i say mixing and stuff like for me that's also just being on the creative side of you know like the creation uh, because you're making a product right you're making yeah, that yeah body of work that that piece of music so like because i was just unable to like focus on that with like you know and of course sure you make progress and then you have to go out again and then you know you you, you stagnate and then you come back and then it's like all right you have to get back into the groove and then also hustle for work because you know all these people just think that he's never around you know uh, i remember speaking to kavya about this once and like and you know even when i wasn't that busy uh, i met her at uh, kamakshi's birthday party once at kamo's place and like she was telling me like i would i wanted to work, i've been wanting to work with you for a while but like yaar tum to kabhi hote nahi i'm like dude fuck is that the impression that i've given you know um because yeah because i'm sure like my only I guess social media activity is like oh check this crowd photo out or whatever yeah, right so yeah, like yeah. everyone just assumes ki ha bhai he's not here uh, <clears throat> so yeah and 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 I I realized that like so last year when that moment happened when that european ill fated european tour which never happened you know because yeah. of the visa yeah. and we we just hemorrhaged money overnight and we with that when we took that conscious decision yo we're going to take a year off or so like you know just fucking get our shit back together like focus on our personal lives and our own personal sort of career trajectories and you know 
coming here to Bombay and just like sort of being like, all right, I'm going to just throw myself into the deep end of this pool and, you know, just like explore this because it's something that I've always wanted to like do. And like I said, I lived that lifestyle and th- to the hilt, like I, I doubt there was much left for me to achieve there. Um, and if it had become like a self-sustaining machine, you know, where like it pays for itself, of course, like given what we're living through now, yeah, you know, imagine if that had yeah, been like, yeah, yeah. So, like it would have been devastating, right? Yeah, because and I mean, you were supposed to be, I don't know if you were going to be playing or not, but Sky Harbor was supposed to be on the uh, Monuments uh, Spirit Box store, right? Which uh, The US kept, store right now. Yeah, yeah, which, yeah, yeah. Which, so, I mean, which, just which imagine, is now just continuously through whatever situation getting delayed yeah, over and over again. Yeah, um, yeah. So imagine, you know, if you're dependent on perform. I mean, I, this is not me taking a, a shot by any stretch at like performing musicians or like session guys, but like, yeah, if you're, if your idea is that you are going to be like your passion project and that too, you want that to be your career, but also you want it to be your career from live shows that I think is putting your eggs in a really, really tiny basket that can overturn at any point. You know, just look at this, you know, like with what would have happened supposing God forbid, what if we were there and then this what? happened? while we were driving from yeah. one venue to another yeah. and there was a lockdown announced you're fucked right like so yeah. i mean i mean so many bands that i know we they they stopped yeah. Yeah, they yeah, had yeah. To go home, like just call off their shit and just go home you know so i mean <clears throat> yeah so man it's 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 really there's there's too many moving parts and there's so much that can go wrong uh in events you know like especially if when these events that you do are, it's not one isolated event. It's like part of like a month long thing where you're playing a show every day. It's who, you know, it's um, a lot can go wrong. So, you know, like, like the, unless yeah, you're, there's, there's no corporate job or no, like even doc, like possibly <laughs> only doctory, but like other than yeah. that, like touring is, it's, 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 it's a, it's a, it's an, it's a complete level of, it's too hard. You know, you need to be really hardened. Like yeah, if yeah, you're yeah. somebody who enjoys being comfortable, oh yeah. God, you're in for a you're in, you're you're in, in for, for trouble. shock. You're in for a shock unless you happen to have become so successful, like off of you know, say streams or like online or you know whatever, or you've diversified your income in various ways because of the band. You know, let's say you've got say like your merch sells like hotcakes, or you know, or you've got like signature products and all of that stuff or um, you know so where the band is like still financially secure and stuff but like if you're relying on gig income and like you know that day-to-day income that you make from like selling merch on gig day or like you know the ticket money or like whatever dude no man like you're you're it's you know it's i just don't see it as being sustainable unless you start when you're in your teens and unless you live there and you own your own vehicle and you own a lot of these assets like these sources that could otherwise fail so you don't have to, you're not you know left having to pay like thousands of dollars to fix shit that doesn't even belong to you you know um you know <laughs> yeah 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 definitely yeah yeah and then yeah. it's like yeah. another last thing i'd say is like if you're from that place if you're yeah. say for example if you're an american touring yeah. in america or if you're an indian touring in india then mm. you can figure out some jugad like because yeah. you know it's your place but if yeah. it's not your place which is usually the situation and which is usually <laughs> the situation you'd like to create yeah. then you're in a flux of because you'll have no idea yeah. and then you know you can't get help like god forbid you get into a problem with the police or anything yeah. like that like before it's any questions thing. like you're going in like yeah you know and then your passport and ah. of course like it's we can't discount the fact that we earn in a weaker currency and then we're going to go spend in a stronger currency yeah. right like you earn in rupees and spend in dollars you're ugh, you're working against yourself man so you know there's there's too many things that are working just against you and um, you know yeah like i said it's it's there is a there's a window of time where you know if you can sort of break past all of these thresholds and sort of get yourself to a point where it becomes self-sustaining although there is no such thing as self-sustaining like you still have to keep working at it like every day and like you know keep pushing 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 and working at it. but like um the thing with doing that is that that your band like literally that particular project becomes your full-time job and then yeah. you have very little time to do anything else yeah and the question for me after a point and for all of us really in the band became like is this what we want to do like all day all the time 
um, you know, like full time. And I think the answer unanimously was no, man. Like we all we all want to do a whole bunch of shit. Like this is one of the things that we love to do. But like if it became like this pressure came that, oh, this is the only thing that we can do or we have the time to do or the resources to do, then it's going to stop being fun really yeah. fast. Yeah. If it stops being fun, then it's a ticking time bomb. You know, where you're waiting, then it's just a matter of time before it ends, you know, yeah. for whatever reason. So like we'd rather just get back, back to doing it for, you know, the love of it. Rather than burn it out and then have it, you know, then just disband because we're just too fried. So, <laughs> so, so moving on to better things, yeah. you've obviously like in the last year, because as everyone's taken like some time off, yeah, so everyone's been doing different projects and people have been working. So you have been working extensively on, you know, mixing and mastering a lot of bands. Uh, yeah. How has that been like? Because I see new and new bands, you know, one thing that I really enjoy now and I'm really happy with is that if a new band comes and they want to put out something new, they're like, okay, I need it to sound incredibly well and I'm going to go to Kesha and I'm like, thank God. <laughs> well, no, I mean, this works for, I mean, you as well. Don't sell yourself short. No, no, no. Like, in, no, and I, when I mean like in, in terms of like somebody going and saying, you know, I want to make it sound good, so I'm going to go to the right person that's going to make it sound good. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, there is, I think, you know, we're, we're also in a time where you just can't get away with, like, amateur sounding shit anymore. It just doesn't fly, you know, like, uh, I think even even for home recording, like, ba certain basic standards have been set. And I think with music, there being so much music out there, you know, like, especially, you know, over the past 10 years, I think the amount of music that's been released with the advent of, you know, project studios, home studios, all of that. I mean, it's all, it's all, <laughs> it's all streaming platforms are saturated. Dude. There's like, I'm pretty sure there are thousands of new releases every for day. Sure. For sure. You know, thousands of new releases every day. That's insane. Like, you know, how are you supposed to keep up with that? So I think if you need to like stand out from that crowd now, there's got to be something, you know, you need to have at least a certain standard of like sound. It, it can't sound amateur. Otherwise, well, again, then again, amateur is also, um, you know, it doesn't necessarily, uh, professional doesn't necessarily mean polished or clean yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. It just needs to sound, yeah. Okay, let me put it this way. So this is, you know, why I tell a lot of bands that come to me and it's something you learn over time uh, is, you know, whenever they start like, you're nitpicking about like, you know, the the little little details because of course we are in the digital world yeah. so we're capable of tweaking any Anything, parameter yeah. infinitely so the question i tell them is like, listen when you're you know you're stressed i can see that you're starting to work yourself up because you're trying to figure out what's wrong or what isn't quite perfect and you want it to be perfect and why isn't it perfect what could i change to make it perfect and I'm like rather than asking yourself all of these stressful questions just close your eyes and just ask yourself one question what i'm hearing is it making me feel good right now yeah you know does the song feel good? Because if it feels good, then yes. the odds are that it also sounds good. But if it sounds good, but doesn't make you feel right, then the whole purpose is defeated, right? But it's a much easier question to answer, you know, that, oh, this either makes me feel nice or it doesn't. Yeah. Rather than being like, oh, I wonder whether the bass needs more 5K, you know. God, I hate that. Yeah, you know why? You know, just don't. I hate that. It's that's like, us. That's yeah. yeah that's that's what to figure out in case you're paying me for a reason. Like yeah, you're paying me to do the job that you can't. Yeah. You know, or you're not equipped to do, or because you want to get from here to there, like without you having to like worry about all these numbers and all of this shit. And honestly speaking, even I don't. You know, like I mean, even I'm sure even you don't. Like yeah, I don't. We, we have an instinct, we follow our instinct, we tweak shit, and then later if it, oh, did I do that? Okay, cool. Yeah, you know? exactly. That So uh. many times, I'm like, I would if I were to probably go by a tutorial, what I'm doing here is incredibly yeah. incorrect. I think a wonderful example is CLA, Chris Lord Algae. Like, if you don't know yeah. who Chris Lord Algae is, like, you yeah. possibly heard everything that everything that you enjoy is prob yeah. probably done by him, like the classic right. records, right? If you yeah. see any of his mixing tutorials, he's taking an SSL EQ, which by mm. the way is in incredibly responsive, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And turning like 10k up like 12 dBs. <laughs> yeah. And you watch Shamelessly. that, and you're yeah. like, what? But then he's hmm. able to balance that and do it in the way he does it and then you listen to it and you're like okay and this like, makes sense and that concept of numbers and everything yeah. just goes out of the window it's nowhere there because he's literally just listening yeah you know? so yeah and you know and this is something that i 
I find especially, I mean, I find that, you know, the really, really experienced artists, they are way more chill because like they oh, honestly, definitely. They, they, they've decided that either they know, in which case they will offer you like actual tangible suggestions because they know just, you know, from their experience that this is what works, this is what doesn't work. Uh, or they're just going to be like, to kar, yeah, I mean, you know, yeah, this is exactly, your, exactly. This is your job. I'm here to do my bit. I'm going to do my bit. But it's the young ones who are so worried that this first piece of work that they put out needs to be perfect or it needs to be as good as it can possibly be, you know, like micromanage every aspect of it, leave no stone under. So they start listening also, not like, like they will listen to music. You start yeah, listening. Yeah, yeah. That you was, know, I, remember that, I remember that point you made. You were like, Dude, I, it's been a long time, man. I really want to listen to music as if it were music and not like yeah. a fucking EQ curve or some shit. Yeah. I was like, that You're makes not listening so to frequencies much and sense. pressure ratios and notes yeah. and scales yeah. and chords and harmonies. You know, it's like yeah. It's, like, and you see that you see that when you work with people that know about that that are confident yeah. about their sound, they're like, do whatever you want to. Yeah. And then there's people who will go like, you know, that symbol at three minutes, four seconds could be yeah. 0. 0.5 to 0. 0.7 dB louder. And I'm like, I'm like, really? Achha. Okay. Cool, like bro. if you were paying me a lakh and a half, two lakhs, dude, I'll do everything you want me to. No problem. But like, nobody's <laughs> going to listen to it. Half the time, you know, it's so weird. I mean, I can, I, I. There have been so many times where I've bounced exactly the same the thing. Same thing. Back yes. Left and yes. Been like, yeah, it sounds much better now. Yes, exactly the same thing. I saw this <laughs> meme that came up during quarantine yeah. times. So there was like the sound <laughs> engineer going like, just because it's quarantine, I'm about to get real. That bass yeah. you listen to, yeah. I deleted it and it's MIDI bass. That kick you re- really think is very nice, it's not your kick, it's a sample. It's, my like, kick, it's a sample, yeah. Like, Stop crying. <laughs> like at the end, there has to be a product that you need to enjoy. And if other yeah. people enjoy it and people enjoy it, it's going to work. Like, That's it. If it makes you, if it makes you feel good, it makes you feel good. It's really that simple. And you know, sometimes like there have been so many times where like, I will just say, if I'm hearing something, I'll just be like, Oh, you know, rather than wrestling with an EQ for 10 minutes, you know, if I, if I'm hearing a guitar part, which isn't quite, which has been given to me, you know, like the, and it's not quite like sitting the way I wanted to sit. I, I'm not gonna sit and fight with an EQ for ten minutes. I'm just gonna get the guitar out and just and I'm going it. to fucking play it, dude. Just track and it. Just track it, and I'll get the sound that I think is appropriate. And they don't care yeah, if I don't, don't tell them. Yeah, they don't know. They'll be like, sounds great. Yeah, cool. Yeah, you know. So they'll be like, oh, I don't know what you did, but now it sounds fine. Sounds fine, yeah. So I and, and this is what I just tell kids, especially kids, you know, because there's, I I tell them, you know, the most important thing is that once you're done with this album and take it from me, you know, who's who spent a year and a half getting that first record out, and sure it does sound good at the end of it, but I can't listen to it, which is yeah. a travesty. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because it's I know that it's a fucking great album, you know, that's, for that's, what yeah, it that's, was. That's, that's the same way I feel about my album as well because I spent so right. much time on it. And Micromanaging. Like, I know how a note bends at an exact second. Like that's like, yeah. and I, I remember yeah. I once it got released and people were like, you know what, this is great, this is great. I would just be like, nah, I don't yeah. know why people are liking it. Like, yeah, yeah, I yeah. hate it. And yeah. it, was, it took me like a good year and I just took time off like 2019 yeah. I took time off yeah, yeah then I one random day just like a friend of mine played it in the car so first <laughs> of all I was like what the fuck are you trying to do like you know I don't listen yeah. to my music he's like no but it's nice so we heard it and I was like yeah actually it's not that bad yeah Um. so there's like I think like balance is like a one thing that has just become my motto is just yeah. if you get things balanced, if you work accordingly, you yeah. know, give yourself time to do everything. You're going to do great things in yeah. everything. Like, and I also don't understand the whole thing of uh, uh, when people say, "Oh, you know what? You can only do one thing and one thing, and that's it." As we sort of th- th- a lot of people, they're like, "Oh, if you're a touring band, then like touring band, do that. If you're a band, like." as soon as a band person or someone becomes a mixing engineer or does some software or anything like that someone or the other goes like oh you know you're great here just do that like don't do this (laughs) which is just like why like 
people are out there trying to just spend as much time productively as possible in order to get as much stuff out and you know yeah like, again like, is where well. you could have just been like okay i have sky harbor and that's it but then you're like if oh, i have what? like yeah. yeah if i have all of that creative thing like what if i don't want to do a heavy record what if i want to do a dance record like yeah i should be able to do that right totally yeah of course which, which then gets into the uh, whole realm of that you have other projects as well which yeah. The, yeah, yeah 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 white moths black butterfly being a wonderful example of that right yeah. because yeah, it's yeah, yeah. so completely opposite to what sky yeah. harbor is but yeah. at the same time it has that same ethos of you know yeah. big sounding stuff in a very different realm how how did that come about because although i love sky harbor yeah the white moth black butterfly stuff is on another level for me <laughs> like it's so crazy because like uh, um man that's the thing i feel like when you remove the distorted guitar and like you know the pounding drums like from a production like suddenly you're just like you can't hide behind those things anymore yeah. right you have to you have to be very vulnerable you know and you have to be like okay, it's almost like you're standing naked in front of people you know like exposing yourself really so like how it came about was like again luck i think dan yeah dan of course like this started out as dan had a bunch of just demos lying around um he was just messing about on pro tools and he was like i have these ideas for songs which don't fit anywhere uh can you just like help me produce them you know just like build on them somehow you know um so i mean we started with one song which was the world won't sleep on that mm-hmm. uh, yeah the piano song yeah, and then yeah, yeah. Honestly like he had he had written the piano part he had even made most of the drum parts and of course the vocals all i did was mix it and add this sound this sample of like birds you know like chirping like in this mm-hmm. middle section and literally like i mean even though it sounds like such a natural like obvious thing like or whatever just an insignificant thing i think he was so taken with that because he was like dude like I I mean at, at that point of time like within our circles the concept of using you know like foley and field recordings yeah, and you know yeah, like yeah. these things like where it's not where every you've always been obsessed about clean perfect crystal clear sound not really about like and you know where it's like a vacuum you're listening to it in a vacuum whereas here now suddenly it's like you've been transported to a space right um like literally like and I think he was very taken with that so I think he was like okay we got to like do more stuff and then we ended up doing a bunch more songs and then then it became more collaborative it started out as me just producing his demos for him uh and then it ended up becoming like basically like how sky harbor start, started out as my ideas mm. and me like his started out as like me producing his ideas but eventually it just became a collab and of course like the big 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 turning point was when we got our friend Randy um oh, Randy saw the guy is he's re- insane matlab i have no words like to just describe like just how inspirational that guy is like i mean i hope he sees this like but um he's mind blowing dude like, and again un- if you don't know who randy slaw is he's probably yeah. been on all the records you're listening listening to on repeat because yeah. if you're in that sphere uh, and if you have any like a person if yeah. a person like yeah. devin yeah. townsend yeah. if a yeah. person yeah. like devin townsend who's worked with orchestras for in- his entire life <laughs> like goes to randy yeah. to get stuff yeah. recorded like you know like he's doing something that's is- out of the world <laughs> he's the fucking man dude and and the crazy thing is like <laughs> he's so chill it's unbelievable like i mean i mean i'm i just got a message on whatsapp from him now because we're literally like because of this quarantine like we're just writing new white moth right now but um yeah it's crazy dude like and, and also wait, what was the point of streaming yeah he's also been on so many uh, bands that i've produced here like he was on kamakshi's last yeah, album yeah 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 he did uh, he, stuff on dhruv's on dhruv's stuff too he's done stuff on inner lab gorav's mm, uh, yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 his his ep so yeah i mean like i i basically just try and plug him everywhere because he's yeah, just yeah yeah i'm about to hit him up very soon also oh, because, yeah yeah cuz it's like Yeah I mean uh, w- when I made the record I had a lot of orchestral parts so I you, yeah, you know yeah, yeah. tried to find the best VST and I spent my money on it and uh, you know but boss. then I was like dude yeah. if I can just get something real done cuz I st- the one thing that I tracked in real time was yeah. I took my time and there was this friend of mine who could play a cello 
so mm. you know we went my university at that point of time luckily had like this big live room and andha equipment i was shocked at the kind of equipment they had like they just had like 10 u87s lying around and i'm like do you guys even know what this is and they'd be like no because it was like more of a place where they would do like scientific research so they'd made like robot drummers and stuff like that so wow. they were never really into the you know audio aspect of it so yeah, i yeah. just took her in one day for this one song i wanted to do with her and i placed like a bunch of mics i was like i have these mics might as well right and yeah. then i put that on and whenever i listen to that section of that song across the whole record i'm like there is definitely a difference because yeah. there's no way you can really capture that especially with strings like okay you know midi instruments have really gotten a yeah. far far way ahead in terms of you know mimicking other instruments like a bass or a guitar or stuff like that but like yeah um uh, strings are just such a such an incredibly acoustic instrument that you really have to capture that sound and the way Randy, the way Randy does it is just like, i agree 100% like, again I think one of the big reasons why he does it is because he gets the songs you know like he gets mm. the music and like you know whereas orchestral uh, musicians you know like guys who like grow up like or who cut their teeth on like you know purely orchestral music like for them uh, you know entering a heavy metal sort of context is very alien to them yeah you know where or like you know electronic you know that whole heavy experimental electronic music so my bad um so yeah so you know that's where he comes in and like he you know if you saw if, if people watch that white moss documentary like the way he just yeah. coaches musicians dude like he yeah. coaches musicians he conducts them he just like instructs them like this is you know it, it's it's mad dude. like i think that that is a skill set unto itself you know and like uh, you know being able to just direct not just what a part should be but how it should be performed like every little detail you know and for so many instruments it's not just like it's what is a, there's no such thing as strings you know strings means like a lot of people a whole variety of yeah, things right yeah. violins there's cellos there's violas there's like you know there's a whole uh, spectrum of uh, instruments that you know and each of those instruments occupies a different zone and it has to be like performed in a certain way right you know so all those little details do it it's far beyond my current level of understanding and i and i'm sure you don't even have to like do much stuff to it because Oh no, no. Way, yeah <laughs> drag and drop yeah cuz he yeah. cuz not only is he a wonderful conductor he knows exactly yeah. how to record the stuff he knows exactly how to <laughs> you know place microphones which yeah. in itself again is an art um yeah yeah, yeah. So, he's not he's too good yeah. so th- that also leads perfectly to the question that i wanted to ask which i actually asked a couple of people what kind of questions they'd like to ask you so one of yeah. this is what have you been working on I've got uh, I've got a lot of uh, you know questions saying when is the next black moth bla- like white, white moth uh. white moth black butterfly record coming out and I'm like okay so that's evident now that you're working on it because you just said and what else do you have going on Oh you mean like in terms of stuff that I'm, like I'm part of like as a project member or like what am I producing or the, whatever you're doing Um I think yeah like I mean last year was was difficult you know like I took I took a lot of I I spent most of last year just focusing on uh, just the producing side of things because I wanted to just you know kick start that aspect of my career but like this especially in the last uh, couple of months like I definitely we've all gotten back to writing you know sky harbor is writing um again back to just being creative because it's fun uh, white moth is writing no honey is writing um I'm also like toying with the idea of just I mean not toying with the idea like I have a bunch of things lying around which haven't found a home and I think I might just like repurpose them and do a solo another yeah, like Yeah that was one question venture. I got where, where someone was like when is Keshav going to release any news on his solo project can we expect something and I was like what there's a solo project what is this I I made an Instagram story once I was oh. last asking like would anyone be interested if I and sure like I guess people would be but that's the thing like I don't know what it would sound like or what it could be because i have like the old pop thing mm-hmm. i have like the, the ambient whatever cinematic thing i have the rock metal thing so i'm like <laughs> what's left you know anything i come up with like can sort of like find a home amongst these three these three things so it's going to have to be like all the etceteras which don't make mm-hmm. 
before, which is too weird. So, like, if I do end up doing a solo record, it'll probably be really strange. Like, yeah. very, very, uh, very weird. Uh, but, I mean, I have some stuff. Like, but, like, again, like, man, like, I'm not going to no expectations i'm just gonna like take my time with it and uh i mean this lockdown is as good a time as any to oh, just yeah. to just like explore these things again you know like one of the things that happened with sky Harbor in the beginning was i was just exploring all these things like you know different uh, different gear different toys different you know like drum samples all of that stuff and just like that now you know now i'm just experimenting with like a whole bunch of these various sound libraries you know uh there's that spitfire has so many free things so that are out there which are so insane good. dude so like good. the and they're free dude yeah. like the, and it's absurd right so i mean so yeah i've i've i'm i'm still like just having fun basically and i guess ultimately once i've had enough fun <laughs> and captured all of it down you know then it's then i'll sort of start distilling it into like cohesive like coherent uh pieces and then structure them and then you know like see if they need vocals and then accordingly like take it from there yeah, but yeah. Uh, let's do one song together no down man down more than down i'm always down to write i've also been taking this time to like write some stuff here and there because yeah. i okay. also took like as you said i took time off you know from everything because Necessary. like in when the record came out and the whole pro, you know time before the record it was just like full steam ahead completely yeah, all yeah. the time and then when that finished i swear to god i mean i i should have been like overjoyed and happy but i was like ah oh, it's done burn finally out, burn out, burn out. Yeah, yeah so um yeah i'm i i'm more than uh, like uh, again the same thing i've started like uh, the whole thing with mixing bands has been so interesting because I've been yeah. lucky enough to be in a situation where bands come and be like, okay, we have this and we want you to mix it, but could you like yeah. add stuff here and there and stuff like that? So I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, that's that, yeah, that's yeah. that's interesting to do. I I recently did this project with a friend of mine. Yeah. He's based in London, but he got um, Mike Malian to play drums on this song that he's done. And then, wow. so then I, I had the opportunity the lucky opportunity of mixing his drums and mm. then that then that song got mastered by Akul so I don't know uh-huh. when it'll come out so but it's like it's been quite interesting and you know just getting these That's offshoot true. projects here and there like I, I, I yeah no I definitely feel like this is the future as far as like you know mix, like these these lines that these that are drawn between producer mixer master you know engineer it's all sort of like yeah. Amalgamating into like you know lines are blurred and I think like we're all sort of taking on each other's responsibilities like you know mixers are also acting as producers also acting as co-collaborators so you know it's a it's a great time to be a creative musician I love it it's, yeah it's yeah, yeah it's great we should definitely work on if you have an idea send it over if I have an idea I'll send it over great, it's, great, it's, great. it's it's yeah so thank you so much for talking to me thank you so much for taking your time if there were any more Q and A's that uh, that I have might have missed yeah, out just let's like see. Me. let's see let's see let's see because I asked, uh, okay, when will No Honey put out new new music has been answered? Oh, I mean, these uh, deadline type questions, there's no answer to that. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah I mean, uh, I guess what they basically <laughs> mean is they, they're they like, can you please give us music? Can you please yeah, give I us know, music fast? I know, I That's know. not how it works, people. It takes time. <laughs> but like, I mean, soon, soon, soon. Like it's, it's, it's in the process. Like it's literally happening. I'm not, you know, yeah. Not sitting on my ass over. Nice, nice, nice. <laughs> and yeah, you also worked with that. Uh, what I wanted to ask was this new Pakistani band you worked with. No, that was some really Taka interesting, Taka. really interesting stuff, man. That, those kids, well, not kids, like, but those guys are mad, bro. Like, they're so, so, so talented. Like, I mean, and I mean, like, I also feel like a proud daddy in some way because, like, when they first reached out to me, they were an instrumental act, and you know, they didn't have, they, I mean, their sound was like much simpler or like not as yeah. elaborate as it is now but like I think I was just telling them yo you guys need to find vocals to like just figure it out mm-hmm. somehow mm-hmm. You know? and like and then they I, I remember like they were asking me like if there's any people like in India that would want to collaborate with them and I remember telling them dude just find someone in your neck of the woods and I'm sure hoga, 100% hoga. you know find someone local and just smash it and then they found these two singers who are bloody yeah, amazing yeah they're so good they're so good, uh, and that whole band is just crazy. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So I mean, that was a great. That was a that was a great because it was very very well engineered, very well produced. Like the songs are great, the playing is outstanding. Um, so it, you know, mixing it was a whole lot of fun. And then like I told them, you know, 
just send it to Ermin to master and always. so it was basically like yeah, always. you know, like it was just friends and this big sort yeah. of, you know, like it it felt very it felt very similar to like how I felt when I was you know doing the final sort of technical side of things on the early Sky Harbor stuff as well because I I I don't know I took a lot I felt like I had a bunch of ownership over this also like just in terms of like I felt that invested in making this prop this album because I hadn't uh, um, I hadn't worked on a metal album in a while and I was like okay this is a great album that I want to like just you know cut my teeth on so yeah. I mean, the album isn't out yet, but they've got two songs. Yeah, out two songs, out, I, which are amazing. Yeah, yeah. I think anyone who's into like heavier stuff should definitely check it out. I and, played a solo on one of them too. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, one thing that I had left out was um, because, well, obviously you moved to Bombay in order to you know get into the whole Bollywood thing as well to a certain extent, and you have, you know, dealt with that in uh, some way or another with the certain projects that you've done how was how did that come about because uh, again was it like you know people just came to you or was it different this time where you had to sort of look a bit and you know try to find a little contacts here and there and get the call where people would go okay we know we want this person to do this no i have to say man like it's again like this this is just this is just crazy how this has worked for me like i've been so 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 lucky and which is why i'm just so grateful man like because i have rarely had to like put myself in a position where i'm like actively out there like hustling i mean um i've had a very rarely like been like hey could i set up a meeting with x x okay okay uh, like you know even with this thing like uh, how i got how i my first thing that I did with films was I think there was that uh, the Dhoni MS Dhoni yeah, bio yeah, 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 years yeah. back so Amal, Amal Malik was doing uh, the, the songs and like there was one song which was a proper like rock song and stuff so Jay is the go to rock drummer or just like drummer yeah, like yeah, in, yeah, yeah. in general so, <laughs> so you know then they asked him like for a bass player and then they, he got Krishna and then they wanted a, someone a guitar player who yeah. would basically play the parts that were written but they just wanted someone to like play it with a little more whatever like attitude I guess so then they reached out to me uh, because Jay and Krishna recommended me yeah. and then and then Amal liked what I was doing and so then like he hit me up again for Badla which was that Amitabh yeah, Bachchan yeah, yeah. film last year did that um, I produced a song with him on that one and then after that man and then uh, Clinton who's uh, Clinton Sereo who's yeah, yeah, like yeah. who's I mean we've actually become fairly frequent collaborators now unbelievable musician oh god Jesus. he's such an unbelievable musician Ooh, uh, I mean yeah I mean his some of his coke studio songs like I mean you know I, I heard them obviously and yeah. funny stuff. like I mean I'd heard all of them and I'd I'd always sort of listened and been like okay you know it's, it's great song and stuff but like I never really delved into listening to it from the point of view of like trying to understand like the harmonic complexity and all of that stuff so this one time when uh, <clears throat> almost exactly a year ago actually when I just moved and I was you know like I needed work because you know I was like all these expenses right so he t he had asked me because his main guitar player was uh, unavailable to do a show and he was like so he's going to do this one gig and you know would I sub uh, and you, normally I don't do sessions yeah, but yeah, yeah. especially not like Bollywood live sessions because I don't have that chops but uh, he was like just you'll have to learn so and so so and so songs. and I started listening to the song I was like damn dude this shit is not easy like those chord voicings and like the progression of yeah. Pretty bloody complicated. So I was like, "This is really, really cool." Anyway, so yeah, I started. I did. I started mixing a whole bunch of things for him. Uh, that's what, man. Like, I think it's really just been a case of like, I have, I have gotten known, or like people are aware of me for what I've done, like as part of my personal project, which is like another thing, like you know, that I tell younger kids who are say, you know, who are very young, like in the early twenties, who don't have much of a personal catalog you know, of their own music, but who want to get into like Bollywood, who want to get into singing, who want to get into playback, who want to get into sessions, who want to get into producing. And I'm like, dude, look, ultimately the big names who are going to give you like, you know, definitive projects and stuff, like they're going to reach out to you based on what your signature is. Like yeah, those yeah. days are gone where, you know, like you had to just conform to a formula. I think films for the more, I mean, like, you know, especially with the younger crop of directors that are coming up, um, they are on the lookout for more edgy stuff, like for things that are a little more different, you know. I mean, sure, there's still an element of playing it safe because it's films. Uh, it has to sell. But they're definitely like, it's not that same 90s kachra formula. I mean, not yeah. the, there was a lot of 
good stuff in the 90s and a lot of crap also but like i think in terms of just like the what works there is no such formula anymore you know I, i've been approached for like a whole bunch of like netflix things and you know like films and stuff like where heavy metal songs dark stuff like yeah, really yeah, yeah, like yeah. you know some of the weirdest shit that i've actually done in the past 6 months has been for like commercial commercial projects and i'm just like that's very refreshing to see you know basically so it's like say so yeah i guess yeah, cool. yeah i mean it's also because like netflix has then given an opportunity to everybody every creative to sort of break this threshold of bollywood yeah. and then do stuff that they would actually like to do because okay. there's viewers for that like and so much content yeah yeah and like all like people like i don't okay i personally don't remember the last time i went and watched a hindi movie in the theater yeah but i have seen countless hindi serials and hindi movies yeah. on netflix yeah yeah because yeah because yeah. they're they're done and produced and they're done very well and yeah. you know so that's definitely uh, one other last question i'm going to mm. give you before we finish is um sure. one thing that i think is very important is you moved places right so you moved your hub from delhi to bombay yeah and that is something that a lot of young people do but a lot yeah. of young people end up shifting to bombay especially for the whole music thing and not mm-hmm. really they don't they're not really able to manifest it into something and then they eventually end up coming back home in the next 2 3 months and they sort of you know feel like oh i could have done a lot more so if somebody mm-hmm. is thinking of moving or taking that plunge what would be like certain things you would recommend them to do because like if you're in your own personal scene and you're getting work in that that's a completely different ball game than completely moving to another place and interacting with new people and trying to get uh, like a foot hold in there so what would you like advise people like that i think first and foremost um have enough savings that you can pay rent for at least a year and a half minimum like have that much money just like in the bank like you know save up take your time and save up that that amount of money and then go because like it's you're not going to see instant success and even if you get one project that does not translate to oh this person is now going to be a regular you know like supply of work it doesn't work that way you know um it so there will be ups and there will be downs so i think one needs to have enough of a safety net that even when you have those stressful because see look i think panic makes us take terrible decisions yeah and stress you know and just worrying and getting worked up about money makes us do really really shitty things like and it makes us bad people also um and i feel like yeah i think that you know wherever you are uh because the thing about moving to bombay a city like bombay is expensive you have to pay rent and you know, if you are in your own city where uh you're staying safe with your parents or you know like where rent is not really like a burning you know, burning a massive hole in your pocket do whatever it takes like you know maybe work find work part time work full time work whatever it might be like just save up that cash um and have about a year and a half worth of rent like manageable rent of course that you can keep aside so that when you do move then you can not freak out if you have a day where you know like it's not been fruitful because one of the reasons why people throw in the towel really quickly is because like yaar fuck kuch nahi ho raha you know like nothing's happening but you know fretting about things isn't going to like change anything you yeah. know so you you have to be patient you really 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 have to be patient i took a long long time to like i mean i moved at the age of what 32 that's absurd yeah, yeah. who does that you know so but i moved at a time when i knew uh even though i didn't have that much money because like like i said you know we blew we hemorrhaged so much money yeah, like with yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. but like fortunately what i had if not the cash was like i had that credit of like you know Stuff. like just yeah like, like just credibility i had credibility and like i had experience and i had like know how and i had uh, a reasonable network or at least you know like two degrees of separation from like people so um so yeah i mean like that way getting work once i put it out there that look i mean i'm you know i'm looking for to be a part of stuff like there were enough people enough takers basically like art right, cool you know let's do this and uh, one thing then you know if you kill it with one thing then you can be sure that like yeah more people are going to come definitely more people will come yeah say so, and you, you, you have to be yeah. good to work with and uh, the other thing okay, that happens yeah. when you're stressing about money is you tend to be irritable you tend to be snappy you tend to be impatient you tend to like want to get things done really fast and clients can sense this people sense this and you know they get this vibe that like 
you know oh fuck like you know ye thoda stress le raha hai fight le raha hai you know like thoda he is trying to hustle things along and is a subtle things that no one will really say but like it will play a part in like their thinking of like what would happen if i had to work with this guy again you know so just be chill be good to work with be patient be kind all the obvious shit that unfortunately isn't that obvious but yeah because yeah, like you have to interact with people and that involves a, like a large amount of you know yeah. just psychology i think a basic understanding of that would really yeah. help you even in situations that are difficult where you have to like yeah. somehow support the session or whatever is happening because it's not going to be like you're not always going to get clients that are wonderful to work with sometimes you're yeah. going to get clients that are just yeah. just really bad to work with but yeah, yeah. but 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 you know that that project or whatever is going to help you in the long term so you have to somehow go through it and Absolutely. you know somehow get it done and it's work know, yeah it's work yeah it's work so you know be professional be good be kind the obvious shit but yeah you know these things stop being that obvious when you're stressing yeah. about uh, about cash so yeah just yeah so yeah thank you so much for taking the time i think it was like Dude, a good thank long you i'm sorry if i completely talked your ear off no no that's yeah. completely fine i was feeling like i talked a bit too much but no, yeah no no i love it i mean i'm sure you can like condense this if you see, if uh-huh. you see. but like thank you so much for taking the time out because i know sure. like, uh, you have no, no. a lot of Great stuff catch. going on But yeah, uh, I hope everything is well on your side. And yeah, yeah. once this uh, foil is over, ultimately. Yeah, yeah once, yeah, when, once, yeah. whenever it does. Because um, <laughs> it's been a while since I've met you, man. And it's yeah, man. No, one of the first chill. things I do, one of the first things I do when they open the airports again is I'm getting on a plane and I'm coming back home. Like, I oh, need so. to like see my friends. I need yeah. to hug them, even though like social distancing. But fuck that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. So yeah, thank you so much man. Uh thank you guys for tuning in and we yeah. will see you sometime soon with probably Dhruv or somebody else. So yeah. <laughs> see you. Yeah. Chal. See you. Chal, man. Take it. See you. Bye. See you. Chal. Bye.